For these biologists, the animal they are in search of likes the dark of night. Here at a remote pond in the Adirondack Mountains is where this animal makes its home. The mating sounds of frogs fill the night air, but not the one they're searching for. Listen. Did you hear that? You can't help but think of frogs when visiting a pond, but there's one frog in the Lake Champlain Basin that has gone unnoticed by some. Why, why focus on mink frogs? You know, what makes them so interesting? And um, you know, here in the, in the Adirondacks, in the North Country in general, through, through Northern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, this is the, sort of the last stronghold of mink frogs in, in the Northeast. So they are, their nickname is the Frog of the North. The mink frog is unlike most frogs. Its core habitat lies north, not south of New England. The mink frog is at the southern reach of its range in northern New York and Vermont. This cold adapted amphibian is found mainly in cold water ponds in the Adirondacks and in just a few ponds in northern Vermont. Identification of the mink frog can be tricky it looks very similar to the green frog and bullfrog, but there are two key characteristics to look for. A blotchiness to the spotting on the legs and webbing that extends to the tips of the toes. Professor David Patrick has been studying mink frogs and how climate change may be affecting them. In his laboratory at Paul Smith's college, he's comparing how mink frogs, bullfrogs, and green frogs survive changes in temperature. So Dave, this wall of tadpoles is pretty impressive. It must take a lot to take care of all of them. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of responsibility having, I mean, there are literally thousands upon thousands of tadpoles here in terms of keeping these, these guys alive, and there's an art to it. Um, they are very sensitive. They're very sensitive to, to water chemistry, and they're very sensitive to the temperature of the water. So if we took these guys out of here and just put them in, in different temperature water, they would um, they'd start floating, which is never a good sign with a, with a tadpole. But the criticism you always get is, well, is this natural? And so what, we, what we've done is we, we, we go from this very simple scale and we take it up a notch. We step up a notch to mesocosm. So these are larger experimental um, arrays, in this case, large cattle tanks, in which we can incorporate a little bit more of the complexity and still see if the same patterns we see here hold true as we go up. So let's go and have a look at the mesocosms and I can show you what those look like. A mesocosm is an artificial habitat that is used for scientific experiments. Professor Patrick is using cattle troughs to mimic a pond habitat. The temperature of the water in each trough is controlled by a heater. Decaying leaves provide food for the tadpoles that will live in each mesocosm. We're interested in whether or not temperature influences, influences the food and then if that influences the tadpoles, because you have sort of the direct mechanism, warm water, faster growth of tadpoles, and then you have the indirect, warmer water, more food, faster growth of tadpoles, and so we can look at both with this. We have some software we, where we take a picture with, with a ruler next to it, and then we can actually measure the, the length of their body, and we'll see how many we find, and then the, at the end of the experiment, we'll, we'll go through and we'll see how many are left alive in the tank of each of the species, and whether or not the temperature made a difference. Will the mink frog be able to survive if temperatures continue to rise? Professor Patrick hopes his research will help understand that question. If warming ponds become uninhabitable for mink frogs, that could be troublesome. Unlike other frogs, they're not likely to move or disperse to other ponds. Um, mink frogs need the permanent water because they, their tadpoles take a year to develop. So if, if their tadpoles are there and there's no water there, things are not, things are not looking too good. So because mink frogs are not very good dispersers, 
it makes us really conscious about thinking about, you know, what are we doing in the habitat around the pond? You know, not just what's going on in the pond, but you know, if we've got forestry or if we're thinking about turning a new road in or something, how's that going to affect them? Because it's quite likely to have a significant effect on them. For animals like the mink frog that thrive in colder temperatures, climate change will surely impact whether or not they remain in the Lake Champlain Basin. Frogs and other amphibians are sensitive when it comes to changes in their habitat, and they are the messengers of what is to come. With the help of scientists like Professor Patrick, we'll better understand our impacts and find solutions to protect habitat for animals in need. Now that you've heard the mink frog's story, what do you think you can do?